WTFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Um, this is Larry Pesavento for TFNN. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Uh, at the half hour, we're going to have um, a very special guest, my good friend Arch Crawford from Crawford Perspectives. will talk to us about the astro aspects that we're under right now, and especially relate those to the uh, 19, you know, 87 market, you know, that we've talked about several times. Uh, I will start the program uh, on the 1987 market. Uh, you know correlation here, but first I wanted to talk a little bit about the Babe Ruth jersey that sold for 4.4 million. It was sold to another art dealer. It wasn't sold to a private person. Uh, he had they had him on Bloomberg, and uh, he paid 4.4 million for it. He thinks it's worth 10 million, and you know folks, uh, <laughs> uh, that's not too hard to look through that one. But anyway, um, the other one that's interesting is I have a very good friend who's a member of most of the exchanges here in the United States, uh, and also has been in this business uh, forever and when I told him about you know how could um, JP Morgan hire somebody like the fellow from Cantor Fitzgerald as the risk control officer when they lost the two billion dollars and he laughed and he said you've got to be kidding and I says what do you mean he said well he said that's the biggest joke on Wall Street he said if you want to assume a lot of risk you want a risk control manager that doesn't know what he's doing and they certainly had one in this fellow from you know Cantor Fitzgerald that lost two billion for them in 1987 so they hire somebody that doesn't know what they're doing so that when something does happen they have somebody as a scapegoat so that sounds pretty good to me I don't know if that's true or not but it certainly makes good sense uh, we've got a call from uh, Keith in Iowa are you there Keith I am Larry how are you I'm good thank you how are you today I'm doing great thanks wanted to have you look at the SH uh, ETF short spy uh, or short S&P 500 Larry sure I would be happy to do that. As you know, uh, you know, I'm extremely bearish, and the question is, is whether we're going to have a. Um, this is a very important test today, as you know. Uh, Steve talked about, you know, Basil has talked about it, and you know, we've been talking about it for an awfully long time. And uh, you know, my guess is, is that you know, we we're going to have something really big happen here, you know, in the next few days. You know, we've gone from 35 to 38 in this, so we've had a 10 percent move. Uh, in this market and it looks like it you know it's had a tiny back off yesterday and uh, we haven't taken out the high of last week yet in the SH but uh, it, we could do that very easily and should we do that you know that would be indicative of uh, you know the market wanting to go a lot lower personally I, I think that it's how we close this week uh, here we are Wednesday um, and we are ending the ending the month we're down five percent in the month the Dow has not had uh, two consecutive up days since April the 26th, 27th. So it's incredibly oversold. That doesn't mean it can't go a lot lower. But, you know, we're going lower, um, Keith. It doesn't make any difference what happens over the next few days, in my opinion. Well, I, I'm on board with you on that and, and follow you closely. Um, I drew out a pattern from the 19th of December last year mm -hmm. up to about the 2nd of April, um, and I bought in on the retrace of that. Uh, I, I, I'm showing a 618 um, Gartley sell at about 39.36, and I, I I'm looking possibly to exit part there, but I, I'm not. You know, I'm not sure if that's the right strategy or not. Um, well, I, I see I see the 618 that you're talking about, but my 618 comes in at around the uh, 4083 level. That's the one that I'm looking at. Uh, oh. which is another almost 10% from where we are now. So I would uh, I put that into Tiger TV if you want to take a look at it, but it, it appears to me that we might make the 4083 level. I think we're going to make the 4083 level. I think we're going to take the November highs out uh, in these. This is just my opinion. This market look is looking so bearish that it, it basically doesn't have any friends. And what, since I've got you on the, on the line here, uh, Keith, I'm going to post into uh, Tiger TV uh, the relationship that we've been showing for several weeks now of the 1987 Dow uh, to the current uh, New York Stock Exchange Index, and it's been matching up perfectly. You know, we've had virtually no movement, you know, to the upside. All rallies last a day or two, 
And uh, it looks like something ominous is really going to come and, and really hit this market. I don't know what it's going to be. It could be from Europe. It could be something totally out of the blue. I don't know if it's going to be the, you know, the euro doesn't need any help to the downside. You know, it drops almost every day. So, uh, you know, it looks looks really ominous. That's all I can say. Maybe the euro is the end from 87. It certainly could be. You know, it, it certainly could do that. I, I don't know what it's going to be. It's just that all the technicals that we've been talking about for the last several months are, you know, lining up more and more. The one that's got me the most concerned, of course, is the TBT and the bonds because, you know, I'm basically long the TBT and short the bonds, and it looks like we're going to, you know, go up into new contract highs again. We we did make new highs in the um you know the ten-year notes, both in the in the German Bund and also in in ours today, uh, in the ten-year. We haven't quite done it yet in the uh, in the thirty-year, but it's going to be interesting. Today is a real critical day because if they if they close the market really badly, down more than you know two hundred and twenty uh, points in the, in the Dow Jones, you know this is this has really got disaster written all over it, in my opinion. Do you? I I haven't heard for a while, but did, did you? With the Facebook IPO, obviously that's a pretty bad harbinger. Did do you look at things like that? You know. You oh know, yes. I, okay. Very much so. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we talked about on the show several times was going back to 2007 when Blackstone came out with uh, the, their IPO, and at that time they were the largest private equity group. They were the darlings of Wall Street, and they brought out their IPO at uh, 38, and it went to four. Now, I don't know if, you know, if uh, Facebook is going to do anything like that, but the hype that was behind it is what was important. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, it, it's the way Wall Street works. If they don't have any skin in the game, these people from Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan and all the others, you know, they're just, they're just basically working on fees. And, uh, you know, that's not a good situation, in my opinion. You know, you have to have some skin in the game in order to make it, things work the way that they should. But, you know... <laughs> Thanks for all you do, Larry. Hey, thanks a lot, Keith. And I hope the corn crop's going to be okay. You got a lot of hot weather coming in this weekend, I guess. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's, yeah. it's interesting. I, it'll, it, it, I'm sure it'll come out all right. I'm sure it will too. We've had a pretty good rally in corn, and then we had a sell-off to the 61 percent retracement. Okay, I wanted to get back to the to the markets here because we are um, at the uh, level of. I'm getting an echo here. Let me see if I can get there. We go. We're okay. Um, we are, um, you know, breaking down in all the commodities that I watch: the crude oil, uh, the gold, the silver. Um, even wheat uh, has dropped over 60 cents a bushel in two days. This is in face of, you know, 106, 107 degree weather in Kansas City, and uh, this is not a good sign. Sugar, cocoa, coffee, I mean, they're all going down. This is very similar to what happened in 2007 and 2008, so we, we must keep an eye you know, on those particular things because they're all, you know, fitting together. The only piece of the puzzle that hasn't started working yet is the bonds, and I still think we're going to be okay, but, you know, we might have to take, well, we're already taking a little heat in the TBT. Uh, we closed about unchanged last night, and then uh, last uh, today, you know, with the market being strong, it looks like, you know, we are uh, going to have to face a little bit more heat, especially if the stock market gets hit really badly. You know, that's going to be a very, very, very tough uh, thing to uh, get going in our direction because they're going to view this as a flight to quality, and from that point, we'll have to... Um, uh, give it another, you know, re reevaluation. You know, if we get stopped out the first time, uh, you know, we'll we'll look at it again. But you know, if we get much above 150 in the Treasury bonds, and and we could be at 150 very easily. If we have a day like today, tomorrow, uh, we could be at 150 in, in the Treasury bonds. And when we get above 151, that's when you know it could go parabolic, and interest rates could go. You know, maybe to uh, you know under two and a half percent on a thirty-year bond. The ten-year German bond uh, today uh, was selling for a point seven percent. I mean, that's just uh, totally unbelievable to me. But this is what happens in a debt cycle, and we are certainly in that. Regardless of what happens with the, um, uh, you know, with this particular trade, this is making a major top. The question is: Is the parabolic move is it coming? Uh, or is it, uh, you know, going to be delayed a little bit? This we will know, you know, very, very soon. So 
Um, we will keep you informed on you know what we see on that. But so far, this is what I see. The stock market is just incredibly bearish. Today's a key day because if we do close, you know, really badly. I mean, the price that uh, uh, Basil talked about on the show, and it was also related to what Steve and Tom talked about, is that twelve thousand three hundred level in the Dow. That's where we are now, and. Um, it's going to be interesting here because we've got you know two and a half hours, uh, actually three and a half hours to go, and we'll we'll um, know more. But you know by the end of the day, the uh, the euro dollar has collapsed, uh, you know way, way under the the one twenty six level, and uh, you know it just looks horrible. I, I posted into the Tiger TV, you know we could, we could come in some morning and this thing could just literally, you know really come unglued, um, but. You know, this is something that the market will tell us that we're going. You don't want to be long this because, you know, even though it's oversold, I think we're down five weeks in a row. I think we've only had two up days out of the last 16 days uh, in the euro, which makes it incredibly oversold. But that doesn't mean it can't go a lot lower. The dollar index is also, you know, taking out the old highs. Uh, we have broken above the uh, highs from January. You know, king dollar that Tom has been screaming about, you know, since, uh, you know, last October when it was trading around 74 and a half. Everybody thought he had, you know, lost his marbles, and now his marble bag is full. And it looks like we're going to be heading to eight, at least 83 on this move, and that would make a three-drive pattern and a you know butterfly move to the upside. That would be equivalent to about 124 to 123 uh, in the euro, and it looks like it could even go you know substantially uh, lower than that. But um, today is really an important day. You know, we, we talked about this several times on the May 22nd, May 23rd level. We had the lunar eclipse, excuse me, we had the solar eclipse uh, on Sunday, Sunday night. That's when the S&P bottomed. It was a, a major solar eclipse. And, and, and Arch Crawford, when he comes on at the hour, will talk to us more and more, you know, about that, about that, that cycle that's there uh, in these things. And he'll relate this to the 1987. It's really interesting, you know, what he comes up with. We got a call from uh, Danny in Atlanta. Are you there, Danny? I'm here, Larry. Hi. Hi, hi. What can I do for you? Uh, we're a little bit below the 786 retracement in gold. Um, what do you see for the downside? Well, it hasn't taken out the 1522 level. Uh, the fact that it's below the 786 is, is not a good sign. But, you know, we're, we're, we've actually gone below it by $10. You know, if we go below the 1522 level, you know, that's the level that really, uh, you know, really, really means something. It looked like it was going to hold the 61% retracement last night at the 1555 per ounce, and then we rallied just to, you know, $10, and then it gave up the ghost, you know, before the market opened, and, you know, down it went. So... Uh, it's a question of whether it's going to hold. The the, uh, the gold, silver indexes and things, it looks like they're holding okay, but uh, this one looks tough. Danny, stay with me here one second. We'll take a little break, and we'll ask, I'll ask you one other question that I think you might be interested in. Sure thing. Okay. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% percent discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back. Danny, are you still with us? I'm with you. Okay, uh, you know, silver has gone down and tested the 786. It hasn't broken below it as of yet. I know it's, it's hanging there by a thread. Uh, and also, platinum has gone far below the uh, 786. So it looks like, you know, everything is, you know, really starting to give up. And, and now we're making new lows in crude oil. We're getting very close to the long-term 61.8 support, uh, support in crude oil at around 88. So, you know, we've got a lot of things happening, but it looks really bad longer term. That, that's all I can tell you. Okay. Hey, be sure to tell Arch how much we appreciate him coming in to spend some time with us. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. His head's big enough. You know, anybody that can <laughs> quote Shakespeare like he does, I'll let him. I'll let you call in and give him the accolades. No, I will tell him that he 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 likes to hear that, which you know we all do. Thanks for calling in, Danny. Thank you, Larry. You bet. And we'll have Arch on here at the break here in a few minutes, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to ask him some questions. Uh, he has a, um, a tremendous, you know, grasp of the market. He he and I are almost exactly the same age. Within a few months, uh, he was born on J.P. Morgan's birthday. April the 17th, and of course my birthday is later, and so he's four months older than me, but we've been doing the same thing for the same number of years, each other almost uh, seems like forever, and uh, he really is the dean of the you know financial astrologers, and he has a tremendous uh, capabilities of memory of these things, and so you'll be able to pull on these if you have any questions. I certainly have some uh, you know, questions that I wanted to ask him about. And uh, he has spent his, you know, his whole life in astrology. As a matter of fact, today 
you know, after the market closes, he flies to New Orleans where he is on the um, UAC, that's United Astrology Conference, uh, where the astrologers get together for uh, three or four days and discuss, you know, various things, not just financial things, but other things uh, related to astrology. So he really knows the material, and uh, he'll be with us, you know, after we have the break. Uh, we're going to bring up the chart here of uh, crude oil here on the long-term basis so you can you know, see that we are within um, a dollar and a half per barrel of the 61% retracement of crude oil going back to October. Um, you know, we are, we've been quite bearish this, you know, since the 106 level when we made that, you know, bear, you know, up there. And since that time, it's dropped over $17,000 a contract in the last two and a half weeks. And now we're approaching the, you know, 618 retracement. And uh, the whole world now realizes that, uh, you know, crude oil is bearish. When we went below 100, that was the first time that we, you know, we talked about it. And then, of course, when we went below 96, that was a, the last line of support uh, for the crude oil. And now we're coming into the major support, which is at 88.55. Uh, we, we're, we're, tomorrow we're going to do the commodity report because we have, I mean, there's major things going on there because everything has just been breaking. I mean, all the soft commodities, cocoa, coffee, sugar, cotton, I mean, all the New York commodities are, are getting hammered really bad. And uh, it appears that, uh, you know, China is pulled out of the market on a lot of these things because they're having problems, you know, themselves, which we've alluded to, you know, over the, you know, the past months that, you know, that, that really it was not nearly a bullish market over there because, uh, you know, the Chinese market has been going down for years, not just m months or weeks. It's been going down, you know, since 07 and all the rallies have been lower. And this is what, you know, we're we're looking at in Europe. Uh, you know, we're breaking down badly. Uh, Italy was down 4%. Um, Spain was down almost 4%. You know, when you get past four percent, you know, you get into the eight percent. You're talking the C word, so uh, you have to be, you know, alert that these things look very, very, very bearish. So you have to be careful here. Uh, you know, trying to, you know, to pick a bottom. All we got off of that solar eclipse low so far uh, on Sunday was a, you know, day and a half rally, and we gave it all back so fast that that's a very you know ominous sign folks and this is what uh, this is what's staring us in the face and and when you add to the fact that it looks very similar to what happens in the New York Stock Exchange index i mean this does not look like a uh you know look like a good good time to be to be long in here that's the only way that i can uh you know, you know, bring it to your attention is to show you the charts. I don't know anything about the fundamentals, but I can tell you the charts and what they're telling you is that they they certainly want to, uh, you know, look like they're they're going lower. And if we close badly today, and you know, we're certainly not doing well right now, that would give us uh, even more information that you know we we've got a chance for a real uh, what we call a meltdown. Uh, you know, or increase in liquid uh, increase in volatility. So all of this is, uh, you know, fitting together um, pretty much like what the charts have been saying all along. And so we have to uh, have to respect that. Now, the the one trade that we um, oops, we got to go here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Japanese yen, but we're going to have Arch on at the break and um, stay with us if you get a chance. Eight, seven, seven, nine, two, seven, six, six, four, eight. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, this is Larry Pesavento for TFNN, and we have uh, on uh, the line Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives, uh, my good friend. Arch, are you there? I am here. Hey, we have a caller from London, England. Michael, are you there? Yes, I am, Larry. Thank you for well, taking my call. Go ahead and uh, ask Arch the question. Thank you. Um, Arch, uh, nice to hear you on the radio. I'd just like to know uh, what your long-term view is, uh, sort of uh, one, two, three years out on the price of gold, if you think that um, you know we will be going considerably higher than 2,000, or, or if you think that uh, we've maybe seen the top. I'd just like to get your, um, your views on it, please. Well, uh, I think eventually all um, fiat currencies go to zero and gold stays around. Uh, whether we're in the time frame for that, I would say that the uh, signs in the sky say that the world is going through a, a terrible wrenching change uh, before 2016. So I would say long-term um, you know, I, I like things that are very good um, investments now. I, I bought some dried food, long-term food storage food, a year ago, and it's doubled. And uh, ammunition for personal weapons is going up 20% a year. Yes, I, I see the... Uh, so what do we need a bank for? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
But you, you think long term it's, it's still a very good bet and it's, it's, this is just a sort of temporary sort of correction that... Uh, well, I would keep, well, what I'd do is uh, keep a, a long-term insurance posi uh, position no matter what. Yeah. And uh, I can trade long and short. I used to trade gold for a living in the mid-70s, and yeah, my average so now, trade know, was like a, two and a half to yeah. four days uh, were most of my trades. Well, thank you. That, 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 that's good advice. Thank you. That, that uh, makes me sleep easy at night a bit more. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Arch. But I would, I would, uh, you know, I, I'm not against, you know, hedging intermediate positions or selling intermediate positions when you break technical levels. Yes, of course. Now, right now, the the current level is what five twenty three ninety. Yes, it's very uh, yeah. And I'm watching that very closely. So far, it has not broken it, and it's tested twice. And, uh, unfortunately, the market, the markets generally in the gold are making the same patterns. And the uh, markets and the gold came down, tested, rallied, and are back down again. So they've got to hold this time and yeah. next time. Uh, do you think it will, coming into the summer, do you think there's a chance they will hold, or do you think it could, could fail? There's a chance they will hold, but if they don't, I'm willing to let some go. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Arch. Good luck. That. Thank you very much. Could, could I just ask Larry a very quick question, please? Sure, go ahead, Michael. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Larry. Uh, I just want to know, are you coming to London at all um, this year for any of the um, workshops? Uh, I don't I'm, think so. If you would get uh, them to ask me, I'll come, but I have not got an <laughs> invitation and I have not signed up for anything. <laughs> Well, no, I, I'm not planning on going to uh, London this year. Maybe in the spring, but uh, nothing, oh. uh, nothing in uh, in the summer or fall. Oh, that's just, I normally hear from Tom Hugard. I think you know. Um, he lets me know when you're coming. I'm in contact with him almost every day, and uh, you know oh, we yeah. haven't planned anything. But if it changes, I'll certainly let you know. Thanks, Larry. Okay, thanks for calling in, Michael. Oh, oh, thanks for your help. Thank you. You bet. I Mark, also uh, believe that hardly anybody will be traveling this fall. That. Uh, the signs are so powerfully disruptive that uh, maybe we won't be doing a lot of traveling. Are you talking about a, a 911 type event, uh, Arch? Well, that's that's possible too. It, the, the numbers are so strange in the sky, and it, it just gets worse for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. The Bradley model peaked on the 16th of March and uh, goes down even through December. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and the we're getting into the Uranus-Pluto squares. The first one, I think, is, what, June um, 23rd or 4th, something like that. Actually, I don't have it right uh, in front of explain me. Explain to the listeners what you mean by the Pluto-Uranus squares, what, what that means on a cycle basis. Okay, well, the Uranus-Pluto cycle is extremely long, like a couple of hundred years, I think. Uh, well, at least over a hundred. Uh, Uranus has a um, will, will make harsh aspects to Pluto every now and then, and uh, they have tended to be at major depressions and major wars. So there's, uh, it's not a good sign that that is beginning. It's going to continue for three to four years one after another, after another, after another, because of the back-and-forth movement of the Earth. It's, they will appear to be moving backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. So they'll come back over the critical angles to us uh, several times, maybe seven times before it's finished. And I think that during that time there will be severe dislocations on the Earth. If you want to know what Uranus and Pluto can do, I think... President Clinton was impeached when Uranus was negative to his Pluto, and Pluto was negative to his Uranus. Yeah, but he stayed in office, so who knows? <laughs> he, he did, but that's the worst thing that happened to him. Yeah. I have a question, uh, Sam, about the relationships that we're having now versus what we were looking at in 1987 with the uh, solar and lunar eclipse. Can you uh, run over the, what you talked about the other day with me on that? Yes. Um, well, if you remember the first... My big Mayan date that was written about popularly was um, August the 17th of uh, 1987, which I believe was uh, 
an incorrect date that it, the actual date was a week later. I, I looked at the date of uh, August 17th, and in the planetary movements, it didn't look like anything in particular. So I was moving ahead one day at a time uh, to see if it would do anything else. And seven days later, on August 24th, the um, that we had the the tightest five body conjunction in at least 800 years that I checked and it was all in positive aspect of Jupiter so I was saying it doesn't get any better than this so what does that mean it means it's a top <laughs> so I said this market will peak on August 24th give or take three days after which we will have a horrendous crash and um, it, if you look back the, the high close on the markets were were August 24th on that five body conjunction now the way it's it drifted lower uh, from the August 24th down into uh, a month later September 22nd or 3rd when we had a solar eclipse on the fall equinox and that mar day that morning uh, the market hit a lower low and frightened the traders turned around and had the biggest up day in history uh, in points to that date. Uh, we rallied for a couple of weeks. It really rallied sharply that first day and kind of drifted a little bit higher over the next two weeks. And on the lunar eclipse two weeks later, um, two or three days, three or four days before that, we had the biggest earthquake in Southern California in at least seven years. And uh, the day of the lunar eclipse was the biggest down day in history in points and began the slide into the crash. Well, this time we have the Mayan date, the very important, on May the 20th, uh, which was a solar eclipse, uh, which has led to what we're seeing so far. And we have the lunar eclipse on, I think, June the 4th, which I believe is it's Sunday? Yes, um, June 4th. June 4th. It's Monday morning, early, uh, it's Sunday night, early Monday morning that we have the lunar eclipse. So I would want to be short for that weekend. Um, I've been short in the newsletter since that uh, March 14th to 16th Bradley top, and I'm still short now. And uh, we're beginning to get a little psychologically uh, stressed this morning and um, some of the things are happening, like the Dow Jones is leading on the downside. The S&P is resisting making, the, making a new low over the last few days. And the, and the NASDAQ is holding better than the others, which is a, uh, a minor positive sign if you have other positive signs. Of course, we've been oversold all the way down, and then it... Uh, rallies for a few trading hours or an hour or two or three or four and then starts down again and the fact that it has not been able to rally above any previous significant high is a terribly terribly bad sign for the market in general yeah. so i'm waiting to see if things will break the support that they're on right now or i i, su I suspected that they would drop on down to the 200-day uh, moving averages, they're all still above that, even with today's action. And, Sam, I've uh, got a question from a, a gentleman in Massachusetts. Mark, are you there? I am, Larry, and good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. I think you kind of answered my question, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, we've all pointed to the fact that we are oversold. My question is, will we get, and this is partially based upon what Tom O'Brien said on his show this morning, will we get some sort of a one to three or four day bounce in this market and and then really make the plunge down, or are we just going to go down here, maybe go up for an hour or two, and then, then head down? What is basically your thinking for the next, oh, several trading days? Well, I can tell you my experience of 1987 is I at the top of that rally into that lunar eclipse, I bought uh, some puts on the S&P at a quarter of a dollar. I think I bought $2,500 worth. When they got up to $70,000, I was looking for a two or three day rally. So I got out. The market rallied two or three hours and then 
proceeded on down, and what I w- if I had held on, it would have gone to 1.2 million. Oh my God! So I'm, if I cover some, it'll be a portion. Okay. So you're thinking that any rally here would be very, very short-lived? Yes. Okay. Okay, like you're talking like a couple of hours or maybe not. Well, I don't know. Nobody knows that for sure. Okay. Um, But if I think it's going to rally three or four days, and I'm very convinced of it, maybe I will cover a portion, but I'm not going to cover it all. Okay. Okay. And I'll be quick to put them back on on any break, further break. Larry, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I think the same thing. It's a question is, you know, we, we if you know we have broken through uh, support on some of the indices from the August uh, or from the May twentieth uh, low, uh, and any any rally we get at more than just a day or two at the most, you know, looks to me that's about it. Okay, great. Well, fine. Thank you, gentlemen, and have a good holiday weekend coming up. Thank you both. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye bye. Yeah, Sam, we got another caller uh, from Robert in Lexington, Kentucky. Are you there, Robert? Yeah, this is Robert Lexington, South Carolina, actually. Oh, it says Kentucky on here because I know there's a uh, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, because they take my twenty dollars every year on the first Saturday of May. Uh, oh, Sam, yeah. he has he has a question. Uh, Robert, go ahead and ask Sam the question. Well, first off, uh, happy thirty fifth birthday for Crawford's Perspectives tomorrow. I believe that's right. Thank you very much. It is. Oh, great! Congratulations. <laughs> thirty five years uh, you know, completed. Having a great letter for that long. Um, I was listening to uh, a recording of you being interviewed elsewhere, and they stated that every major crash has occurred after a Mars opposition Uranus. And I know we, I looked it up on uh, the next one is July the 18th, and man, that day is just loaded with uh, critical aspects uh, becoming precise. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm speaking in New Orleans uh, this coming week, and I was looking over those charts, and I said, oh, my God, that thing is, like you say, it's loaded. It's a new uh, yeah, moon. I, I, it's yeah. a, something opposite to Neptune, and it's the uh, Mars opposite to Uranus. So it's that's a major event. Something really big is going to happen around that time. Right. I mean, I had Mars opposite in Uranus. I had Jupiter trying, I mean, sextiling Uranus, so kind of expanding the event. And Jupiter trining Mars, so adding more juice to it. Uh, and then Uranus square Pluto and Mars square Pluto, and, of course, Mars square opposition Uranus. Yes. But when they said that, they didn't give, is it like within a, a month or two after um uh, this Mars opposition Uranus, or just within the next six months? It's uh, within uh, the period of time from the opposition of Mars to Uranus to 30-some degrees before, 39 degrees, I think, before the next conjunction is when they've all occurred. Uh, and anyway, it's from the 18th of July to the end of February of oh, okay. 2013. Somewhere in there, the market will crash. And... Now, this is a two-year cycle, and we do not have crashes every two years, but we have to have some kind of setup. Well, are we set up right now? There's so many. The juggler has got so many balls in the air that if any one of them drops, it's going to take all the others with it. So absolutely. And it okay. and, uh, and the We've got to addition take a break of the Uranus Pluto square is sort of hyping the probabilities. Okay, Sam, we've got to take a break here, my friend. Will you stay with us till the end? For converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, My jeweler offered me uh, about $650, but you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about $1,200. At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just do a deal with you. 
you guys the other day. Oh, good. And I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a one-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hello, this is Arch Crawford. Hi, are you there, Arch? Yes. Oh, good. I thought perhaps that uh, I'm getting an echo. I don't know why that is. Ex could you explain the 18-year uh, uh, solar cycle, please? Well, the 18 and change uh, is the uh, eclipse cycle. So that in uh, the same type of eclipse that occurred 18 and a fraction years ago will happen now. And um, 
the next one will happen 18 and a fraction years of that of that particular type of uh, eclipse. So uh, that's the relationship. That it's the um, passage of the node of the moon crossing the equator going all the way around uh, the uh, 360 degrees. Okay, now that ha that has now completed. Is that correct? Well, it's uh, there's always several of them going on over overlaying each other, but mm -hmm. the um, we we are in, in an important eclipse cycle. But I am not following the the detail down to that fine point. Okay, good. We have more eclipses in November. Okay, listen, Sam, I want to thank you for coming on, and we're certainly going to have you on in July, if that's possible, to talk about the 18th of July, if it's going to be something pretty big. All right, certainly. The, um, <clears throat> the first of the, Mar the Uranus-Pluto squares, I think, is the um, 18th of July he was talking about, right? Yes. No, that's the Mars-Uranus. Uh, uh, in late June, there's the... Uh, the first one of the other big hits. So we'll 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 have the eclipse on the fourth, and then we'll have some other things happening in uh, the middle of June, and then we'll have uh, that July 18th. So there's plenty of action this year, and it just gets worse and worse. Okay. Well, we'll certainly have you on again, and thanks for joining us, Arch. You're very welcome. Okay. That was Arch Crawford. If you want to uh, reach him, it's Crawford Perspectives. And uh, his, his 35th anniversary of his newsletter, and uh, he's been in a, the top ten list for many, many years. He's been um, a technician of the year several times, uh, and, uh, you know, he's done a great job. And he, he certainly knows the, um, the business of, of cycles, you know, very, very well. Uh, we have held so far uh, today in the NASDAQ. Uh, we have not held in the Dow. Uh, we have not held uh, in the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, but the S&P has held up above the lows of uh, the 20th, as has the NASDAQ, which has been held up the strongest. That's probably due to Apple. It's basically unchanged on the day now. And so, uh, you know, there's still a chance that we could get a little bit of a rally from here. But, you know, as we've, it was, as we've seen over the last few days, every time we get a rally of, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, uh, it, it goes up, takes out the previous day's high by just a, a point or two, and then, you know, down it goes. The $64 question is, how high are the bonds going to go if the market collapses? Uh, that's why we have a stop working in the TBT. Uh, it's down about a half a point uh, or so today. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, tomorrow's going to be the commodity show. It's going to be pretty wild because we've had so many things going on. Everybody have a wonderful day, and may God bless. <laughs>